Hi everybody, I'm Rachel, the Contracts Lady. What I'm going to tell you about today is why I am a cyborg and how that will help you overcome any problem. So the very first question I normally get asked about this is, what's a cyborg? Does everyone in the room know what cyborg is? No. Well, handily, I have a poster. This is a cyborg. So I'm going to tell you why that is me. So to start off, I want you to use your imaginations. As a young girl, I was really, really active. I played hockey for club and county. I swam for club and county. I ran cross country for school. I played the violin, I sung in choirs, I played in orchestras, I played the piano, I played the treble recorder, I played the desk count recorder. Between my brother and myself, my parents never had a minute to themselves, ever. And I just love being busy. Somehow I fit his homework in, never quite sure how, but it got done. And then in senior school, I started with um, backache. And as you do, you turn around and go, Parents, I've got backache. Parents turned around and went, it's backache. It'll go away. OK. So carried on doing everything, all my sports, all my music. I joined another choir by this point. So I was touring England, singing in cathedrals in summer holidays. I was just absolutely loving life. And um, so carried on doing everything. Got to my GCSEs. Parents. I've still got backache. It's backache, it'll go away, it's nothing important, nothing important. Sat my GCSEs, got into the senior school I wanted to get into for my A-levels. Thought, I've still got backache. This senior school was in the same town as my doctor's. So I made myself a doctor's appointment for lunchtime, didn't tell my parents. Hello doctor, I've got backache. It's backache, it'll go away. <laughs> Right, OK. So went away, went back three months later. Hello, Mr Doctor. Still got backache. Hmm. Well, I tell you what, it's probably muscular. Here you go, have some anti-inflammatories. It should clear up in three to six months if it doesn't come back and see me. So six months later. Hello, Doctor. I've got backache. Hmm. You shouldn't still have backache. Well, yeah, I've kind of had it since I was like 12. Right, I think we need to figure out what's going on here. So you'll need to go to see a specialist and you'll have an x-ray taken and then we'll know what we're dealing with. I still wasn't driving at this point, so I had to tell my parents I'd been to the doctors, I'd been on tablets for six months that they didn't know about, and that I needed to go and see a specialist. My parents turned around and went, they're good RGPs, they're really thorough, I'm sure there's nothing wrong. So, went to see the specialist. Hello, Mr. Specialist. I've got backache. <laughs> Had a chat with him. Right, tell me what you do. I'm like, well, I play hockey. I play the viola, sing in choirs. I go swimming. I love being busy. Right, OK. Well, what we need to do is sort out an x-ray for you. Yeah. I was told I'd do it now. No, no, you have to come back for the x-ray. Then it has to be processed. Then you have to come back and see me. And then I'll write to your GP. Then you go and see your GP and then we'll decide what to do. Fine, OK. So, sorted out the x-ray, went to have my x-ray done. A little while later, went back to see the specialist. And he said, have a sit down. Got something I want to show you. That was my spine. He said, I'm not sure you realise, but that should be straight. What has happened is when you were growing, the muscles on either side of your spine grew at different rates. And it's twisted your spine. So, first things first, go and do some physio. See, see if we can sort it out with physio. So he recommended me to a local physio. Went through all the physio. Went back, they did another x-ray. Nothing had changed. So it's not right, okay. 
Well, you've got two options now, and I'm going to give them to you. Then you're going to go away and have a serious think about them with your parents, and then let me know your answer. Your option one is you do nothing, your spine will carry on twisting, you'll be in a wheelchair by the time you're 25, but you will be able to have children. Your option two is you have an operation, we put a rod down your spine to straighten your spine, you will be walking, but you will not be able to have children. I was 18 at this point. I went home, talked to my parents and said, what do I do? They said, well, we can't decide for you. It's your life. Now, obviously, you know which decision I took because I'm stood here talking to you. But for me, at that point, there was no decision. I could have a life I couldn't imagine, baby in wheelchair, or the life where I could potentially carry on doing everything I love, my, my sport, my music, so I went down the um, operation route. So I went back, hi, Mr. Specialist. I'll have the operation, please. Right, OK. That's fine, we can get that sorted for you. However, this operation is so complex, there is one NHS surgeon in London who is currently doing it. He has a seven-year waiting list. You won't get seen on the NHS in time. Do you have private medical cover? Because if you do, I can do it for you within six months in Manchester. Fortunately, my dad, through his work, had private medical cover that still covered me because I was under 21. So, yes, fine, we're going to have the operation, we're going to do it in Manchester, it's all going to be wonderful and brilliant. So I went and had the operation. There was a couple of technicalities during the operation, so much so that I had a collapsed lung, and at one point when I was in recovery, my heart stopped, so I've been clinically dead. Because of these complications, this is stage one of Cyborg, I ended up with loads of wires, monitoring everything that was going on. My dad took the day off work for my operation. My mum couldn't, she was a self-employed dentist and she couldn't clear her schedule. So my dad was there and my best friend came over. Now, after the operation, I was high as a kite, having a lovely time on some wonderful drugs and really thoroughly enjoying being in bed, apart from the oxygen mask. And my dad said to me, you've got to keep that on. And I was like, I don't want it, don't want it, don't want it. The power of friends. My best friend turned around and said, if you touch that mask again, I am walking out this door and never speaking to you. I never once touched the mask after that until the nurse told me I could. Why she got through to me and my dad didn't? I've no idea, but she did. So, private hospital, only me on the ward. Absolutely brilliant, absolutely brilliant. My best friend and I used to work in a nightclub. She'd come over on a Saturday morning at half past three, come up to the ward. We'd order cheese and ham sandwiches and a cup of tea. We'd have a great natter. She'd go home half nine, ten o'clock. I'd get a couple of hours kit. My dad came in with my mum at sort of twelve. They stayed till about four. I'd have a bit of a kip. But I was the only one on the ward. This was October and they wanted to close it for Christmas. They couldn't close it until the physio had had me walking up and down a flight of stairs because my legs were now different lengths to the lengths they had been before the operation. So I had to learn to walk again. The physio said, well, we want you out of here, so I'm going to push you hard. Three weeks after my operation, I walked up a flight of stairs at hospital, down a flight of stairs at hospital, and they said, fine, go home. Slight issue here. Hospital flight of stairs, six up, six down. Mum and Dad's stairs, 35 in a spiral. <laughs> what do you do? <clears throat> well, what I agreed with my parents was that I would walk six stairs down, 
my dad will then pick me up and carry me downstairs to the lounge. In the lounge before she went to work, my mum would lay out five cups of water, because I wasn't allowed to lift anything heavier than a cup of water, and she'd bring the kettle in from the kitchen to the lounge. So in the morning, I could make myself five cups of tea. She'd then come home for lunch and help me do things that I needed to do over lunchtime, and then in the afternoon she'd line me up five more cups of water, and then she'd go back to work, and I had the afternoon there. But I told you I was active. There was nothing wrong with my brain, and I was bored. Absolutely bored. This is where friends come in again. I had a friend who was a national sales rep, and he came up with a suggestion once I was strong enough. My parents dropped me at his house in the morning with a book. I would then go out in the car with him around the country. When he was in meetings, I would read my book. When he was driving, it was company for him, it was company for me, it got me out of the house. You do not want to know how much I learned about material during those three months, and seriously, don't mention Pierre the Clown. So, fast forwarding on a little bit. So I was still doing physio, I was still doing exercises, and I had to go back for um, follow-up x-rays just to make sure everything was fine. And happy to say, it is. That is now what my spine looks like. So that rod is the reason that I'm standing here talking to you today. That rod is the reason I met my husband. If I hadn't have had that operation, I would never have met him because I would never have been able to get upstairs at the company where we met. My husband is amazing. He is really, really supportive. He helps me lots. But I tell you one thing, there's still some things I can't do. He's not sporty, so I never got back into my sport. But we both like cycling. So we worked on that because I can do cycling with my back. And two years ago, we cycled from Manchester to Liverpool for charity. We're hoping to do another one in a couple of years. The reason for the couple of years delay is the fact I love my garden. I absolutely adore my garden. The problem is, with that in my back, I can't lift a full watering can. I could ask Tom, my husband, to do it, but every plant would die. <laughs> so, what do you do? Well, I used half watering cans. And I toddle over to my plants, and I tip half watering can in. And I go back. I get another half watering can, and I retrace my steps, and I do half a watering can. Or oh, correction, I did. Earlier on this year, with Tom's help, we built a stumpery out the front. We were moving tree roots, because you kind of forget you've got this thing in your back when you've been living with it for almost 20 years. And um, I moved some tree roots, and then I thought, my back's hurting. Kind of didn't think much of it, carried on doing a bit more gardening and then thought, my back's still hurting. So ended up at physio very recently um, and spine manipulation. Got it all working again, but now I can't lift a half watering can. So what did I do? I decided, I went down the pound shop and you can get some little nozzles that fit on two litre Coke bottles. So now what I do is I fill up a two litre Coke bottle with water and toddle over to my plant. And I repeat until the plant's finished. What took me four hours, probably now, would take me 12 if I did it every plant every day. You've just got to do what you can do. So what I really hope you're taking from this is that things happen for a reason. Without this operation, I might not have any children now, apart from my 37-year-old child called a husband with his own Lego room. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I have got a child. He's, he's 37, but he's really supportive. I've learnt if you look outside the box, work around the problem, you'll always find a solution. And that applies to personal or to business. If you come up against an issue, no matter what that issue is, take a step back. Think about it, and you will 
find a solution. Smile, be